When you open your trunk, does water rain down from the top? Do you have water that pools on the inside that you just can't find where it's coming from? Do you have water pooling in your rear footwells that doesn't seem to be coming from inside the car anywhere? Then today's video is for you because I'm going to show you exactly where almost every trunk leak in every make, model, and car comes from. And they all come from the same place. And honestly, it surprises most people. But first, roll the intro. So most people think that when their trunk leaks, it, it's probably coming in around the trunk lid, which is a logical assumption. However, the seals on most trunks, as you can see like this one here, are quite thick, heavy, and robust. And when the trunks are closed on most cars, they're covered and protected. And really, unless when you open your trunk, and you can see my trunk lining is missing from this car, it was soaking wet so I had to dry it out, Unless you can come in here and you can feel wet trunk lining directly under the seal somewhere, so you can see where the water would be running down and soaking everything in its path, it's probably not your trunk seal. By far the most common leak point on the back of, like I said, any make, model, and year of car is the tail light. Or more accurately, the tail light seal. Yep, and it surprises most people when I tell them that. But the rubber seal that runs around the perimeter of your tail light, these for some reason tend to dry out and shrink and no longer seal properly. And to be honest, a good 99 times out of 100, if you got water in your trunk, it's coming from around these guys. But the good news is there's a simple and cheap fix that I have done on multiple, multiple vehicles that will solve this issue forever. And odds are in your basement, you've probably got what you need to fix it. Some people have asked me as well when I tell them that water pouring out of their trunk lid is likely to come from the taillights. Uh, they ask me, well, how is that possible? How is the taillight leak getting up into the trunk lid? Well, it's a process that happens a little bit over time. What happens is these start to leak and the moisture and water gets into the trunk. And then, of course, the trunk warms up either through driving or through the temperature variations throughout the day, or just weather. And of course the water inside begins to evaporate and it flows up into the trunk and since the trunk is in contact with the colder, colder air outside the water condenses, the water vapor it is, condenses inside the trunk and it becomes trapped in there and you get little pools of water underneath your trunk lid liner. So when you open it up it of course it runs down and it just pours out into your trunk. So if you have water up in your trunk lid it's very very likely that it's coming from lower down, and it's even more likely that it's coming from the tail lights. Um, like I said, the trunk lid seal and any sort of seal around your uh, logos or badging on the uh, trunk, these are unusual leaks. They're very small. They're very unlikely. If you have any kind of substantial amount of water, or even a little smaller leak, it's very likely to be these tail light seals. So the first step is getting access to the backs of your tail lights. Now in my case, I've already loosened this piece of trim off. I would tell you how to do this, but it's different in every make and model of car. And you really, really are better off just to do a quick Google search on how to remove the trunk liner or trunk panel in your particular car, because guaranteed someone's made a video of how to do that or written an article on it. And they'll be way more accurate than I can, because I can't describe every make and model of car. However, what you're after is access to the tail light. Now as you can see on the back of mine, I have four knobs which hold the back cover on to change the bulbs. However, the tail light itself is actually held in by these four or five nuts that are held around it. Most cars are very similar to this and shouldn't differentiate a lot. So what we're going to do 
is first unplug my tail light. Make my life a little easier. And now we're going to completely remove it by removing those bolts that I discussed earlier. So once you have removed all of the retaining nuts from your taillight assembly, out it comes. As you can see here on the uh, taillight assembly, there's a large rubber seal that runs all the way around it. Now ideally, you would replace the seal with a new one. However, in a lot of cases, especially with older cars, the rubber parts that you can buy um, from third-party manufacturers often aren't any good. They don't fit right or they quickly deteriorate and often leak worse than the ones that you can get. And often leak worse than the ones that are on the car originally. Sometimes going to the dealership is an option for seals like this. However, they're often many, many hundreds of dollars and very expensive if they're still available at all. In my case, they're not, and in a lot of cases, they're not. And third-party companies rarely produce these parts because they're very low volume and there's not really any money to be made on them. Um, so what your best option is, is to simply reseal them. So to do that, you just need to remove it carefully from the tail light. So you want to reuse the seal. So you don't want to tear it. Work your way around. Don't rush it. Like I said, you really don't want to tear it. Make your life worse. And there it is. With the seal removed, you'll see there's a lot of dirt around the opening here. You'll want to clean that up so that the uh, sealant we're going to use will be able to stick to it. I like to use shop towel, and you can use any detail you want, soap and water, what have you. I use Windex. It seems to do the job quite nicely. And just give it a, a wipe off, get all the loose dirt out of the way. And the next one you gotta do is the seal itself it needs to be cleaned. So again, we'll take our shop towel, some Windex, and we'll give the seal a clean. There we go. That's pretty much as clean as it's going to come, unfortunately. So you can see, I mean, I got quite a bit of dirt off of mine. So, as for the sealant I'm going to use, I really like this stuff. It's Lexel. It's completely clear. Turn to the English side there for you. It's extremely elastic. It'll actually stick to wet surfaces if you were going that route. Now, this should be dry when you do this to get a good seal, but if worst comes to worst, this will stick to wet surfaces, or so it says. It's completely clear, it's completely waterproof, and it's unbelievably elastic. When this stuff dries, you can stretch it out like a rubber band. And that's what you want here, because the body of a car will move a bit when you're driving. When it heats up and cools down, it'll expand and contract. You want something that's gonna stay sealed. So I highly recommend an extremely flexible sealant. Now, you're going to seal two areas with the sealant on the tail lights. You're going to look at where the seal actually sits on the tail light, and you're going to put sealant between the tail light and the rubber seal, and then you're going to put sealant between the seal and the body. That pretty much guarantees you a perfect seal all the way around. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just laying it on to see where the sealing edge on this particular tail light is. So I can put the silicone in the correct spot all the way around. And then we'll apply our sealant. So you don't need a lot. 
you just want a thin bead all the way around so that it will seal to the rubber seal and the tail light. So just a thin bead will do you. Particularly around any bolts or anything that go through the seal. Those are pretty common leak points. So you want to make sure to get seal sealing around those. There we go. That's all the way around. So now you're going to take your rubber seal, your clean rubber seal, and you're going to place it back onto the light, sandwiching the silicone that you just applied between the seal and the light. Work it all the way around. Make sure it's seated properly. There we go. So the seal is now placed all around the light fixture. So what you're gonna take this moment to do is you're gonna get another piece of shop towel. Helps if it's a little bit wet. And anywhere where there's a bit of silicone that has squeezed out from around the light fixture, you're gonna take this opportunity to wipe it off. You can, of course, trim it off and take it off once the fixture, once the uh, silicone is dry. But it is much, much easier to do it now. There's a little bit left that I'll scrape off once it's in the car. So now we're going to place the silicone onto the sealing edge that seals to the car. Now in this case, I'm going to take a moment just to confirm exactly which part of the rubber seal contacts the body. Just so that I put the silicone on the correct spot. So we're going to get our sealant. And much the same. Work our way around. You don't need a lot, because the gap between the seal and the body is not big. You really just need a smear. And carefully put it back into the hole, as dead straight on as you can, so that you don't get silicone anywhere where you don't want it to be. Just like that. Push the seats into place, all the way around. And now you're going to put on, or put back in rather, the fasteners you removed to suck the seal and the silicone Push. up against the body of the car. I worked my way around several times, snugging it down so it was all nice and even. And of course, a little bit of silicone has squeezed out between the seal and the light. So we're just going to get a moist rag and wipe it off. Like I said, once it's dry, it's also fairly easy to trim away or to remove the excess as it will just peel away once it's cured. And so once you've wiped it all away, or in my case, there's a little bit here that I'm going to peel off once it dries, 
because it's, it'll be easier than uh, smearing it right now when it's wet. And there you go. That's the easy way to reseal your tail light and it will be completely waterproof probably for the lifetime that you own the car. Um, it's cheap. Odds are you already have a tube of silicone in your basement and it'll completely solve the problem.